to get underway as we pick up commentary now from Jock Brown and Ian St John. Thank you very much indeed, Arthur. Yes, the teams are out there on the field to a very substantial welcome from the big crowd. 74,600 tickets sold for the match. And Ali McCoy is certainly a player who relishes the big match atmosphere. He's out there waiting for the formalities, which I think Ian St John, the players, don't really relish. Well, everybody wants to get on with the game, that's for sure. And there's a strong wind blowing down Hamden Park, uh, left to right, as we look at it from the main stand. Uh, it's a very brisk wind. So, I mean, I think the captains, when they make the toss, will have to think about that one, John. It's also very cold, so the players, I'm sure, will be very keen to get on with things. The dignitaries coming along the line, Ian Gillitley, the president of the Scottish Football League, leads. And he is followed then by Mr John McKenzie, the chairman and managing director of Alloa Brewery Company. And there's also David Holmes, Dick Donald uh, from Rangers in Aberdeen. There's David Holmes shaking hands with his captain for the day. I think it's a significant job that Graeme Souness is uh, not out there. Well, Graeme Souness is in the director's box. It's Walter Smith who laid out the Rangers squad. And there's Jim Farry, the secretary of the Scottish Football League, who's also in his customary position for these circumstances. And along the officials, Alan Granger, the linesman, with referee Bob Valentine and linesman David Brownlee. There's Ian Porterfield enjoying his first major cup final north of the border. The winner scored by him in the 1973 FA Cup final for Sunderland, but here's a man with lots of cup final experience, Willie Miller, shaking hands with the Rangers chairman, David Holmes. So some very experienced players lined up behind Willie Miller. They certainly will not be in any way overawed by the occasion. Jim Layton, one of the trio at the back who means so much to Aberdeen, along with Alec McLeish, and young Joe Miller, just 19 years old, beside Jim Layton, but he too has shown his flair for the big occasion. So a very colourful lineup as the dignitaries depart to leave the scene free to the men who matter most this afternoon, the players in both camps. So the players break, the floodlights in fact are on very early, and a reminder in the first instance of the Rangers lineup. And a very interesting team at that. Uh, the Rangers team showing several changes, of course, from the team which played a week ago, and again the team that played against Gornick, with no soon as Woods and Butcher, of course, and there's no Francis Falco or Phillips in the starting lineup for Rangers. So Ali McCoy is the main goal-scoring threat for Rangers. He's a goal-a-game man so far for Rangers in league and cup competition so far. 20 matches, 20 goals, and he's added an extra three playing for Scotland in international matches. So statistics show the importance of McCoy to the Rangers lineup. Right, the Aberdeen lineup too, showing that very important introduction of Neil Simpson to the midfield. Young Willie Faulkner gets a place also. And uh, it's a very powerful midfield with Simpson, Bett, and Nicholas in that area of the field. It'll be interesting to see where John Hewitt starts the match. Joe Miller will be the main threat up front. So Neil Simpson has missed those nine matches, as I say, for Aberdeen back in the side. There's his background, three international caps, and but for injury, I'm sure that number would have been greatly increased. So Simpson wears number four, and the warm-up continuing now. A very long warm-up, Ian seems like. Well, I did make the point here how cold it was out there today. It was a very, very strong wind blowing, a chilly afternoon. But I'm sure uh, once, once the players get going, they'll soon warm up. The atmosphere is tremendous. I mean, it's, you know, it's nice to see Hamden Park full and very colourful. Lots of people down from Aberdeen, which is great to see. So that was a lingering look there at Nicky Walker, the Rangers goalkeeper, playing his first match of the season, owing to the suspension of Chris Woods. He's already made it clear he's played 13 senior matches against Aberdeen without being on the winning side for Motherwell, Rangers and Falkirk. Well, the referee, the most experienced, the longest serving referee in Scotland, Mr. Bob Valentine from Dundee. And clearly very relaxed for the occasion, checking with the linesman for the starting time to get the watches set. It's Aberdeen who will start the match. And they're lining up with youngsters up front, Joe Miller and Willie Faulkner. So very close 
scrutinising of the watches by the referee and linesman. And the Skoll League Cup final is underway. So the singing and chanting you hear, principally at the moment coming from the Rangers fans, who outnumber the Aberdonians substantially, of course, here in Glasgow. There's Willie really Miller calming things down, escorting the ball back to his goalkeeper, Jim Layton, and now it's with McLeish. Robert Connor winning number three and playing at the start of the match at left back. Volker for the high ball. Roberts wins it. And there's the new partnership with Chip Goff joining Roberts in central defence. A tackle from the back by Miller on Robert Fleck and the first free kick of the match. No question there that Miller came through the legs of Robert Fleck with that tackle. A sore one to start the match for the young Rangers striker. So Graham Roberts with the free kick. Run by Simpson. This is Ferguson. Now uh, McCoyst. A neat turn. And a good effort from McCoyst. Fleck was waved offside. But whether he was interfering or not is a matter of some debate. But this is fine play from Ali McCoyst. Look at his confidence turning on the ball, trying to flight the shot towards the top corner. And Leighton was happy to see that over. He's very much on form, Ali McCoyst. Uh, full of confidence, you know, full of tricks, full of running. Uh, I think he's going to be a key man. The, the Aberdonians will have to keep him quiet today. There's McKimmy playing it forward. Jimmy Nicholl. Header by McLeish. And a late challenge by Fleck, picked up by referee Valentine. Just a little bit reckless, bundling into the Aberdeen centre-half after the header had gone. And McLeish looks unperturbed as he waits to take the free kick. But a clear indication, Ian, that referee Valentine is going to stamp on anything at the start of the match. Well, always in the first couple of minutes, you know, the defenders especially, you know, like to influence the game a little bit, let the forwards know they're there. And Roberts playing it forward, only as far as Willie Miller. There's Connor. Faulkner is offside. Flag is up on the far side instantly, and referee Valentine, who is... Renowned for being right up with play, gives the free kick. So first touch for Nicky Walker. The Felicia's header. Treacherous wind swirling around Hamden at the start of the match. Monroe going forward, he's brought down by Jim Bett. And a free kick to Rangers. Bett to follow the Rangers player, and Stuart Monroe in the side in place of Jimmy Phillips this afternoon. Richard Goff has joined the attack for Rangers. Davy Cooper. Kimmy. A bet. McCoy's cut off the road to Leighton in goal. And this is Robert Connor. Robert's playing that towards Nicholl, but it's collected by Hewitt, operating wide on the left in the early stages of the match. Durant getting back, and the clearance is blocked by Hewitt. A very experienced player now, John Hewitt, despite his 24 years. Been in many cup finals already for Aberdeen. Nicole trying the overhead clearance, but he played the ball out as he set up the overhead kick. So a throw to Aberdeen. Simpson. Good play from Hewitt, stepping away from Ferguson. The out swinging cross, and it broke awkwardly off Monroe for the corner kick. But there was a fleeting chance there for Willie Faulkner inside the six yard box. The ball seemed to flash across rather quickly. Look at this from Hewitt. Faulkner couldn't get on the end of either of these balls, and Aberdeen have to settle for the corner. Leash is right up inside the six yard box, marked by Goff. Led away by McCoy. Strange is pulling everyone back to the box. There's Willie Miller now popping up on the right flank. Superb central defender, perhaps not quite so accomplished that outside right. Yeah, actually, it was 
It was a difficult ball for Willie to turn back first time there, you know, it was running away from towards the touchline. He tried to spin and turn it in and uh, hit the crowd with it. But it's, it's nice to see that uh, Aberdeen are not overawed by the occasion, you know, they're out there to, to have a go. And it was a nice bright attack. Kimmy gets the high ball forward. Ferguson back to Roberts. Roberts is put under pressure by Faulkner. Now that appeared to be a trip by Roberts. And the free kick has been given. Here to hold him back with the left arm and catch him as he tried to sprint away. It was a careless pass back that by Roberts. And Rangers exposed to yet another Aberdeen attack in the early stages of the match. Mickey Walker lining up the wall. Five in all, lining up, wearing blue in front of the Aberdeen free kick with Nicholas and Hewitt and Bett. Miller and Simpson in front of the wall as Walker tries to organise things in front. There were two men trying to blind the Rangers wall and the goalkeeper. Reflected from Bett, there's Simpson! And a splendid save there by Nicky Walker. That will do his confidence lots of good. The Rangers defence caught out as the free kick broke off the wall. It was deflected wide. It came back inside. There was Simpson forcing his way forward. And it's well blocked by Walker. And turned away in the end by McGregor. of activity inside the six-yard box. Goff and, McGre and McLeish together again. And pushing by Miller on McGregor. Miller clearly unhappy with the referee's decision, but referee Bob Valentine couldn't have been closer to the action. I think Miller was upset because he ended up on the ground. I think it was a bit of pushing both ways there. But it's, again, it's, it's all Aberdeen at the moment. They've got Rangers in uh, all sorts of trouble. I thought it was a good save by Walker. That would do his confidence a very good. Good leap by Miller. Goffner waiting, Goff didn't. Down goes Neil Simpson. He was brought down by Ferguson. Well, if Neil Simpson's short of full fitness, it's certainly not apparent in these opening minutes. He really is putting himself about in the middle of the field. Well, this is McLeish. Sharing a word with Robert Connor. Jimmy Nichols header. Connor pressurised by Fleck and Durant. That's good play from Connor. Now Nicholas. Here's Betts. He was closed down very quickly indeed in midfield. He was forced to play it back to Miller. Kimmy had been making a run on the right but Aberdeen have to start all over again with McLeish Joe Miller and it's towards Faulkner and Hewitt here's Nicholas and Miller here we got ball for Joe Miller with Jimmy Nichol coming in Simpson to McLeish that's one for Faulkner to chase he's free of the Rangers defence and down goes Willie Faulkner, that is a penalty kick. Nicky Walker pulling down the Aberdeen number 11. The penalty given instantly, Roberts protesting, but I really can't think why. This looks to be very clear, let's see it from behind the goal. Faulkner got in behind the square Rangers defence. Good play going beyond the keeper, and that appeared to me to be a clear penalty kick. I don't think I can have any complaints. You know, I think it was going to be a penalty kick now, all the way. So it's Jim Bett, he'll take it. Bett has three out of three so far this season. So 100% record at stake as he faces Nicky Walker. So the referee insisting that the ball is spotted correctly. That's not good for the nerves. This will certainly test Jim Bett. And here's Bett against Walker. Brilliantly finished by Jim Bett. Nine minutes into the first half, and Aberdeen take the lead. Jim Bett remaining the calmest player on the field as he drove that past Nicky Walker. Now this is 
a perfectly struck penalty kick. Walker made a fine effort going wide. The pace of the ball was too great. So Betts puts Aberdeen ahead. It was a nerve-tingling penalty kick, you know, and uh, Betts stayed cool. Goalkeeper read the way he was going, but uh, couldn't really get it. But a great start to the match by Aberdeen. They're looking by far the better side. They look to me, Jock, like a team that, that know each other. Rangers at the moment are, are playing like a team of strangers. So Aberdeen's good opening, capped by that first goal. I think there may well be question marks in the Rangers camp too about how easily they were penetrating through the middle by Willie Faulkner's run. They certainly appear to be caught square. And of course, Graham Roberts and Richard Goff playing and central defence together for the first time here. Well, that's right. As I say, that there are, you know, you look at the team and you say, well, hang on a minute. You know, I know they're good players, but you have to play together a long time. When you look at Aberdeen and, and you've got Miller and McLeish there, you know, who have a million games between them. The chat for the moment is Aberdeen, Aberdeen. As McKimmy makes the clearance, Nicol first to the ball. Good pacey play by Nicol. Here's Ian Durant, Nickel again. Now that was excellent play by John Hewitt. That was ideal defensive midfield play by the young Aberdeen player. He lost out in midfield, but matched the run forward by Nickel to make that challenge. Good header by Roberts. There's McCoyst. Cooper. Kimmy steps in. This is Hewitt. Chance to run at Nickel. He's very quick indeed, John Hewitt. Robert spotted the danger to provide cover for his fullback. Corner now to Simpson. That was towards Hewitt. Simpson gets it back. And Hewitt looking up as Robert stole the ball from him. And Roberts clearly has a vital role to lead this Rangers effort in the final. Well, he's been the most consistent player for Rangers this year. Uh, I've, I've watched quite a few of the Rangers matches, but Graeme Souness himself has said that Roberts has been the outstanding performer. Ferguson running straight into Betts. Flag is up against Joe Miller. And the free kick is taken instantly by Roberts to the row. The turn pass came from Cooper. The ball goes through harmlessly as Fleck couldn't reach it. It's through with Jim Layton. Well, Aberdeen are notoriously difficult to take back once they go in front. I think the statistics say that there's only once in the last eight finals that the team that scored first lost it. I think I'm right in saying that. Well, that's, I think that's right, Ian, and that certainly is an impressive statistic to Barton Aberdeen fans. So David Cooper with the throw for Rangers. Here's Ferguson. Towards McCoyst in the middle. He goes up with Miller. It breaks for Durant. Well, there's the menace of Ian Durant again. Racing into the box from his midfield position to get on the end of a loose ball. And this could so easily have been equaliser. Ferguson doing well, flighting it in. Miller going up with McCoyst. It breaks loose. And there was Durant leaning back as he shot. You look at them, Jock, as little half chances, you know, it was never, because he was under pressure, as the ball bounced him, he was under pressure by a defender, it was a little half chance. Up goes Roberts. So here's McKimmy. Miller sets off in chase, he's very quick. And Goff is forced to slide in to concede the corner kick. Well, Aberdeen have had problems with goal scoring this season, but they certainly are not short of pace in attack with Joe Miller and John Hewitt. They look very quick, aren't they? Very, very quick. And I think that's going to be the problem this afternoon for Rangers, you know, containing the speed of the Aberdeen team. So McLeish goes forward in leisurely fashion now. Aberdeen have the initiative at the moment. Willie Miller is also in the box. Get in by Hewitt. There's Faulkner. Willie Miller trying to get on the end of that, and McGregor stood his ground and nodded away for another corner kick. Willie Miller was being very careful there, he didn't do any pushing into the back of McGregor. 
Well, I fancy it might be crucial for Rangers not to concede a second goal. Richard Goff is picking up McLeish in the six yard box, but McLeish has managed to get away the last couple of corners from him. The Jim Bett with the corner kick. There's McLeish! It's off the line by Ferguson. And both Goff and Walker lost that cross, lost the corner kick. And what a let off that was for Rangers. There's Goff going in, Simpson trying to get the ball across the face of the goal. Breaks awkwardly off Simpson. Well, this is quite remarkable. An orthodox corner kick that set up all the trouble as Jim Bett played it across, was missed by everyone in blue, and there was a the chance for McLeish. I don't think he could quite believe it. Cleared by Ferguson. Well, as I say, that you know, he's getting away from his marker in there, uh, McLeish, and really should have done better. This is Connor. Oh, Joe Miller. Confident play by Connor. He's very comfortable on that left foot. And McKinney goes down as the pass goes across. The Rangers have the throw. There's no question at all. It's the Aberdeen midfield which has taken a stranglehold on the match early on. Beck and Simpson in particular. Here's Graham Roberts. Good pass wide for Nicol. Here's Ferguson. Nicol wants to return. Stepping away from Connor. Now Durant. Ferguson again. McCoist. Tackled the hard by Nicholas. The ball appeared to strike the hand of Ali McCoist. Yes. The free kick's been given by referee Valentine. McCoist, I think, protesting that it wasn't intentional. He certainly can't fault the referee's positioning in. Oh, he's up with play. He was up. I think it was one of those where the ball just jumped up and hit him in the hand. And anyway, Aberdeen had won the ball. I think he might just have let the game flow then. Faulkner going up with Roberts. McGregor playing it back to Monroe. Willie Miller's header. Here's McKimmy. Very accurate clearance that from Miller. Straight to his fullback. Here's Joe Miller. Trying to make room for himself. Here's McKimmy. That's for Faulkner. Now Joe Miller. That appeared to be handball too by Miller, yes. He kicked the Rangers. It struck the hand of Joe Miller. That helped him control it. Phil Borsma out of the dugout for Rangers with some instructions. Phil Francis and Avi Cohen are the Rangers subs. Protest from the Rangers camp again as the free kick is given by Bob Valentine to Aberdeen. Happy to penalise Robert Fleck. A short one preferred again by Aberdeen. Connor pitching that in. And an offside flag was up on the far side. The culprit was Joe Miller. I think Rangers are trying to uh, sort out their little problem of stopping Aberdeen attacking down the flanks. You know, they're, they're managing to get at Aberdeen, uh, at Rangers, down both flanks. And, uh, I mean, David Cooper, for instance, has been inconspicuous, hasn't he? Hasn't had many chances to show his talent so far in the match. There's Nicholas, now Faulkner. Miller was onside despite the appeal from Stuart Monroe. Good play by Durant. Durant and Miller clash, and the free kick goes to Rangers. There's the Aberdeen bench in Porterfield, right in the middle. Their substitutes are Brian Grant and Peter Weir. Here's McCoist. Good play from Nicholas. Now Simpson under pressure, losing out to Ferguson. Shot was blocked by Miller, there's Fleck. It's beyond Durant, now Roberts. Here's McCoist again, tackled hard by Miller at the edge of the box, and the free kick's been given. Miller is incensed by the decision. Ali McCoist took a very hard knock on the calves. 
It's a brilliant turn this from McCoist. Now well, let's see how Miller handled this. There he goes, going through the player once again from the back, and that, for my money, was certainly a free kick. Well, I would, I would have been a little upset if I was Miller because I think he made a good clean contact with the ball, Joe. He put his foot through uh, McCoy's legs and got the ball. Well, there's Miller again. Well, for my money, he came through the legs of McCoy's to get to the ball. Miller certainly thought it was fair. But the free kick's been given, that's certainly not in doubt, and... It gives Davy Cooper, in particular, a marvellous opportunity from the 18-yard line. Well, we seem, I was saying anyway that we haven't seen Cooper, but it could well be that uh, he could make an impact in the game now. And some anxiety, I think, in the Rangers bench about the ability of Valley McCoy's to continue. He's a very strong player, though, McCoy. He shrugs off knocks very well indeed. That's shown by the fact that he was never present at the Rangers side last season and this season so far. This is very few matches through injury. Now, the Rangers free kick. Roberts is there, so is Davy Cooper. I really fancy it will be Davy Cooper who tries to bend one past the wall. The referee insisting the wall comes back the full 10 yards. And that's much easier to measure when you consider that's the 18-yard line. With a six-yard line there also, so it's an easier task for the referee to identify. Roberts is dictating things. That's brilliantly struck by David Cooper. 21 minutes gone, Rangers have equalised. And a stunning free kick from David Cooper. Well, they don't come any better than this. Thundering the ball past the wall. Leighton had no chances that thundered into the river net. Well, I think I called it right, John, didn't I? That he, that's about his first kick of the match. But what a kick it was. Normally, you'd expect him to bend it, but he blasted that one. Tremendous power. And really, Jim Leighton had a chance for that. Seeing that again, there's a query about the wall, which seemed to break slightly as the shot came in. Although, you can hardly blame people from wanting to avoid that shot hit with tremendous power so that may well change the complexity of the match Aberdeen have certainly ruled from the start but with that lift with equaliser Rangers may well be restored to some level of quality on the field also there's the Rangers fans enjoying that precious moment provided by David Cooper and Aberdeen retained possession There's McKimmy. Well, bet. Put away by Monroe for the Aberdeen throw. the throw, here's Willie Faulkner it's a good turn using bet again but look how little room there is for anyone out there Aberdeen have a throw again McGregor read that to clear up field and there's the pace of Fleck now setting off he's got too much pace for McLeish Here's Ferguson getting the ball ahead of Simpson and a fine tackle in the end by Simpson and good goalkeeping by Leighton preventing a corner kick. Tremendous pace shown by Robert Fleck there. Really raced away there and, and caught Alec McLeish. There's Walter Smith now on his feet with some instructions. David Cooper now hearing his name being chanted around the stadium and that remarkably was his first goal of the season. That's a good leap by Roberts. There's Fleck. McGregor and Bet tangling and they calm down quickly enough. And the referee will have a word with Jim Bet. He certainly was the offender, leaning into McGregor as the ball was in the air. But thankfully, that little incident came to nothing. Graham Roberts uh, is injured at the moment as well. He uh, looks to me as if he's hurt his arm or his elbow. 
Well, what a warning suffices for Jim Brennan. There is Roberts. His right arm somewhere has taken a knock. I think he landed awkwardly after winning that high ball. It's a golf free kick. Headed away by McLeish. Only as far as Ferguson. The choice backing in, and it's Durant who can't control it. Here's Cooper. McLeish goes across before McCoy's can reach the ball. McLeish and McCoy's together. There's Fleck. And it was corner at full stretch to cut that off. Doing well, covering his central defence. Fleck's pace is beginning to pay off for Rangers. Picked up by Nicholas. Easy one for Nicol. This is Connor. And now Hewitt. That's towards Faulkner. It's won by Goff. Here's Neil Simpson. Allowing the ball to run away from him. And Roberts came forward to pick up possession. This is Cooper for Rangers. And McLeish intercepts. Joe Miller running into trouble. One by Cooper. This is Ferguson. Now Fleck. Ferguson, that's straight to Nicholas. Now Simpson. And Hewitt. It's away from Ferguson. Good play in the flank again from John Hewitt. Looking for support in the middle and wins the corner kick in the end off Jimmy Nicholl. pace on the field an attack in particular Fleck and McCoy's for Rangers, Hewitt and Miller for Aberdeen but John Hewitt will take an outswinger this time McLeish waiting at the edge of the box there's Willie Miller, he couldn't reach it Brett thundering it in headed away by Nicol and Fleck thumping the ball clear here's McCoy kept the ball in play Supported by McGregor. McCoy's again. Turned away by Jim Bett. There's Monroe. Now McLeish. And McGregor is penalised for bundling into... Peter Nicholas. Aberdeen with a free kick. There's no question, though, Ian, that that goal has certainly helped the Rangers' cause. Well, it's it certainly livened the game up as far as Rangers are concerned because all of a sudden they're now right bang in the game and, and playing with a lot more confidence. Well won by Goff. Connor playing that into space, looking for Joe Miller. And Roll is there first. McKimmy was very quick, and Cooper did well to recover. Giving it away though to Bet. Here's Joe Miller. Nicholas. It's towards Hewitt. Slice kids by Jimmy Nichol, but Goff was there for Rangers. The police coming in fiercely to win the ball. Here's Hewitt. away from Durant and still John Hewitt doing too much I think on the ball himself though he had a lot of movement around him but Hewitt they elected to keep possession and now Rangers can break with John McGregor now McCoy this is Cooper Connor a little bit slow on the ball allowing Nickel to make the challenge Peter Nicholas with some instructions to Neil Simpson. Fleck back to Ferguson and now Nicholl. Fleck again has 
Connor stretches in. Good tidying play in midfield by Nicholas. There's Willie Miller. So half an hour gone. Rangers won, Aberdeen won. Superb entertainment in that opening half hour. Aberdeen taking a grip in the match very early on. Could so easily have been more than one ahead until that magnificent free kick from Davy Cooper brought things back to square. Here's Fleck for Rangers. Now Durant. Played back by McCoy for Ferguson. Durant. Casual flick inside, which Miller played forward only as far as Nicol. Roberts gives it to Simpson. Here's Bett. John McGregor has clearly been given the task of keeping Jim Bett quiet. Here's Hewitt. That's towards Faulkner. He's with Richard Goff. Will Faulkner. It came off Goff. It's a corner kick to Aberdeen. No question that Aberdeen have had a substantial edge in terms of corners one. As McLeish again goes forward, and this time I think Aberdeen prefer the in-swinger as Jim Bett has delegated the task of taking the corner. Mickey Walker looking calm, he's had a solid start to the match after such a long layoff from first team duty. And of course, ball, which is swept away by Munro. With Joe Miller. Now Bet once again. Far post cross. Up goes Walker. That'll be a free kick, I fancy, yes. Willie Faulkner getting a little bit upset in the goal mouth. But Nicky Walker electing to try to catch this cross. Now that was confident goalkeeping as Bet made room for the far post cross. Up went Walker under intense pressure. And the referee had judged that a foul. Willie Faulkner getting a little bit upset. And there will be a little bit of a delay for some treatment to Walker. For some activity on the Aberdeen bench as Peter Weir and Brian Grant do some warming up. Peter Weir could certainly make a substantial impact on the match later on if Aberdeen required him. Well, it's a good card to play, isn't it? Ian Porterfield's, you know, got that one. And uh, he'd said to me before the game that if things weren't going too well, obviously, you know, Peter Weir would come on. Uh, because he felt he played well in midweek. Now, Nicky Walker has treatment to his left heel or left ankle. And there's his background. The shorts and first team appearances, obviously. His first appearance today, that's the number one you see. He certainly has done well so far. McGregor's <laughs> header, this Fleck. Looking for McCoyst. Willie Miller was there calmly, and it's now McKimmy. A lot of room now for Connor on the left. Here's Neil Simpson. Driving at the Rangers box. Well tackled by Ferguson. Clearance by Nicol, reaches Nicholas. Now it's with Hewitt. Good tackle by Jimmy Nicol. There's Richard Goff for the header. And Durant sees the chance to break for Rangers. It was well read by McLeish. Anticipated that pass from Durant. Kimmy, Nicholas, Simpson. Good play from Aberdeen in midfield. Hewitt now going at Jimmy Nicol. And good timing again by Nicol. Very strong on the right side, and that's where Hewitt wants to go because he's a left sided player. Three tackles Jimmy Nicol got in there, Jock, which is very, very important. You know, Hewitt's quite rightly having a go at him, trying to get past him, but it was three very good tackles by Nicol. McCoy's doing well, here's Fleck. Ferguson trying to release McCoy on the right. A slight miscue and a throw to Aberdeen. 
A very earnest look in the face of Walter Smith, the Rangers coach. Ten minutes of the first half left. Rangers won, Aberdeen won. And a splendid match in progress. Here's Robert Connor. Faulkner. Brought down by Roberts. Well, I think you can take it, he doesn't agree. I think perhaps the Rangers bench shares his view, but a free kick it is, and... Anthony Valentine's made it clear he's not at all happy with any tackles from the back. Leash goes forward again. John Hewitt with his left foot will take this free kick. Good out swinger, no one at the far post, and it's McCoy's back in defence for Rangers. That was played away by Bett, who is arguing with the linesman that it should have been an Aberdeen throw. Now having a word with referee Valentine. I mean, I would say that from here, Jim Bett has got a good case there. It certainly looks as if McCoy's got his foot to it first. Stuart Monroe with the throw for Rangers. McGregor to Durant. This is McCoy. In the middle is Fleck. Here's David Cooper coming from a deep position. Durant to Fleck. Good tackle by Connor, a very important one because Ferguson was free on the right for Rangers. And now Aberdeen trying to make Rangers suffer with a quick break. Stewart has been held up well by Nicol, but he's away from him this time. Here's Faulkner. Now Connor. And the first time ball inside was blocked by Nicol. Well, Nicol fought very hard in defence for Rangers. Done well again, Jimmy Nicol, but I'm very impressed the way that the, the Aberdeen team have thrown the fullbacks forward. You know, on both sides, they're getting a lot of space when, when the lads come forward from the back. Peter Nicholas with the throw. It's Connor up with the attack again. Good cross from Nicholas. Goff is there. Now Hewitt waits for McKimmy this time, the right fullback for Aberdeen this time. Here's Bet. Off the face of John McGregor. Now Simpson switching it to the left for Nicholas. Here's Simpson. Well, he had space for the shot, all right, but appeared to be in too big a hurry. And you'll see when the ball reaches him this time, comes from Nicholas. Now, Simpson really had a little bit of time here, but he snatched at the shot. He actually didn't give himself enough room when he, when he controlled the ball, Jock, and he knocked it just a half a yard ahead of him. He'd have got a better strike pass him into the ball. But again, you see that it was the full-backs, both full-backs involved in, in the build-up again for Aberdeen. Yes, they're leaving one back to cover McLeish and Miller, who are with the Rangers' front two, Fleck and McCoyst. But the other is certainly free to get forward. Another careless challenge there by Fleck. As Miller headed the ball away, Fleck's boot came up. That's why it's a free kick. Lishy's free kick, up goes Willie Faulkner, not quite what he intended, I think. Cooper trying to get away from Bett. There's Fleck, well, no question about that, down goes Fleck, and Alec McLeish was caught by the very quick turn of the Rangers striker, and I think McLeish will be the first player in the match to be booked. So here's why Alec McLeish is being shown the yellow card. Fleck setting himself up for a turn inside. McLeish was out of range, caught the Rangers player from the back. No question about the foul. Yes, I don't, I don't think you can really quit a, the referee's decision on that one, John. He came flying in there. And really, he had no chance of winning the ball. You know, and it was a situation where you could see that Fleck was going to turn with it. And it would have been better if he just held off. So Robert Fleck getting treatment, and there's his background. A lot of people think he should be a regular on this Rangers side, but Mark Falcon has been preferred many times in recent weeks. But selected for this particular task against McLeish and Miller, where you see him getting back on his feet. Davy Cooper's free kick. It was Neil Simpson, and now uh, Hewitt. So 
the free kick or the throw rather to the bean as Walter Smith expresses some anxiety once again. Jimmy Nichols header, here's Fleck. Durant's header to McCoyst. Here's Durant, a great chance for Rangers. And that was magnificent. Walter Smith relishes the moment and well he might. That was a superb goal from Ian Durant. Leighton was left badly exposed. And there was the strength of Durant. The layoff came initially from Fleck. The header followed by Durant. He then supported McCoy. Took that neat flick, sprinted through the gap, and left Leighton with no chance at all. <laughs> Durant's fourth goal of the season. We'll see it came from Jimmy Nichols' header initially. This certainly must be a candidate for my money for the goal of the season. That was a superb move. It was lovely to see McCoy laying the ball off. Normally he would try and turn himself. But this boy Durant is what an exciting young player he is. So 2-1 to Rangers. Ian Durant gets the second goal. And if Aberdeen are looking for Peter de Blame, I think they may have to concede it. It was just marvellous play from Rangers. Here's Jim Betts. Goes Simpson, it breaks for a ball, but he couldn't control it. There's McKimmy. And a half chance on the edge of the box. He couldn't keep the shot down. Actually, Faulkner had the chance there, John, as the ball came over. You see, I think it just caught him on his shins there and just ran away from him. You know, had he been able to even just side foot it, it was a chance. And then McKimmy blasting that one from the edge of the box. But, I mean, it's a, a tall order now for Aberdeen to fight their way back into the game, but... They've played enough good football, they've, they've created enough chances. You know, I think they can get back into it. Well, it's the Rangers end, which is jubilant for the moment. After a sticky start to the match. Jimmy's header, as it tipped off. Bet now to Miller. And rolls pass back. Stuart Munro has an eye gash there, you see some blood coming from his right eye. There was some question of him going off for treatment, but I think he'll wait until the interval. There's Nicholas with the header. Played off by Fleck, there's McCoyst. Played too quick with the shot, he had more space than he realised, I think. here at Hamden now as the Rangers supporters make themselves heard. There's the head of the front, Nicholas. There's Joe Miller. Long way back from Durant. Walter Smith clearly enjoyed that goal, but he's not at all happy about something at the moment. There's Roberts. There by McKimmy, there's Bet. And now it's Joe Miller. Oh, it's good play from Miller. Asking too much though of uh, Willie Faulkner with the forward pass. Well, it's remarkable really in with Aberdeen such control in the opening quarter of an hour or so, now being a goal behind. Well, the one thing you can say about this Rangers team, and they certainly battle. I mean, we saw that last week, and I don't mean in the physical sense. You know, they really, they do play when they get behind, and uh, they've done that again today. They've shown a lot of resilience, a lot of character, and uh, we're going to have half time when I thought Aberdeen possibly had been a better side in the first 45, but uh, well done, Rangers, for fighting back. The long ball from Walker is won by McLeish. A push by Joe Miller and McGregor, the free kick to Rangers. Free kick. Missed by Fleck and McKim. McKimmy. Uh, goal kick to Aberdeen. 
And it looks as though Rangers will be happy now to go at half time. The goal in front. The instructions from Walter Smith again. So 45 minutes of the first half are over. The referee thinking now about time to be added on for stoppages. There hasn't been a great deal of that. Dickie Walker took a knock in that treatment, so there may be 30 seconds or so as Willie Faulkner screens the ball and no free kick is given. That's with Aberdeen. The advantage rule applied as Bet has possession. Coming across field, Connor makes a good angle. Good play from the fullback. Now Hewitt. This may be Aberdeen's last chance in the first half to get back in level terms. And Nickel again doing well with that challenge. And Ian Durant also stepping in. McCoyst breaking. Nicholas is with him. Still McCoyst. Appears to be no way through. He did well to get it back to Durant. And here's Roberts. Well aware of Willie Faulkner inside, judging the pass back well. The referee's allowed an extra minute in this first half. As McKinney's header is picked up by Nicholas. Header by Munro. Bravely going for that with blood coming from his right eye and Durant goes down after a clash with Willie Faulkner the referee wants play to continue there's no hold up at all and in fact Phil Borsma was already on the field despite not getting permission from the referee the Rangers players clearly were unhappy about Willie Faulkner but it's the referee who is now going to have a word with Phil Borsma for entering the field without his permission well I played with Phil Borsma at Liverpool he was always a bit quick you know but <laughs> never as quick as that. <laughs> well, certainly much too quick for the liking of referee Bob Valentine. Durant is still sitting on the ground inside the centre circle. And the incident which upset Durant and the Rangers players comes up here. And there's no question, Willie Faulkner goes in late with his boot up. And really, I think he's a lucky player not to incur the wrath of referee Valentine. Ian Durant, very impressive record now in the international side and I think he may well be a fixture and I wonder now if the referee is going to have a drop ball because if so it's going to be inside the Rangers box now that really would be very harsh on Rangers in these particular circumstances if Aberdeen cashed in but the referee I think will have a difficult task after he allowed play to run and well gets it away and the referee I'm sure will blow for half time now rather than risk another attack, yes there goes the half time whistle Willie Faulkner not even spoken to for that challenge on Durant and Graham Roberts is clearly making his point to the referee but what a tremendous first half it was Aberdeen taking control early on Willie Faulkner brought down by Nicky Walker in 9 minutes Jim Bett gave them the lead then Davy Cooper's superb free kick in the 21st minute made it 1 each and Rangers came right back into the match until this goal coming five minutes from half time set up by this little flick inside by McCoy a darting run from Durant a superb finish and Rangers at half time lead by two goals to one so with that such dramatic action happened. yeah I agree with Mark it's, it's going to be an uphill struggle for Aberdeen right it could be an interesting second half let's go back now to Hamden Park live and pick up a commentary on the second half from Jock Brown with the reminder that should there be extra time we will stay for it and if there are penalties we'll stay for that too I wonder Jock if you think it will get that far well I think the opening 10 minutes of this second half will be crucial after I think that really will dictate what might happen as the game goes on Aberdeen will have to get right back and start I think the second half the way they started the first but there are no substitutes for the second half so far and either side has been tempted to make a change as Rangers get the second half underway and it was interesting to consider at halftime the impact that might be made by substitutes Trevor Francis and Abby Cohen for Rangers Brian Grant and Peter Weir for Aberdeen and I think Ian St John fancies that uh, Peter Weir may be involved before very long Yes, I think Peter Weir uh, will make his appearance at some stage in the second half I think Trevor Francis is a good substitute for Rangers to throw on Here's Fleck breaking on the right for Rangers. Back it goes to Jimmy Nicholl. Jim Layton commanding his area. 
stumbling as he lands, but no question of the ball leaving his grasp. Roberts for the header. Good ball from Nicholas. Here's Jim Bett. Now Joe Miller. Playing it in low this time. Richard Goff, very sure footed in the box with the clearance. Christ to Ferguson. That's good play from Nickel. Pass reaches McCoy, instant layoff. That's good play again from Rangers. Durant releasing Fleck on the right. And across blocked by Connor. Now Derek Ferguson. Very Miller. Quickly to the ball. Here's Hewitt. Well, he's very quick indeed, but Roberts read that well. That appeared to be a foul by Hewitt on Roberts, yes. Free kick is given, a handshake between Roberts and Hewitt. Graham Roberts appeared to be a little bit irate on the half-time whistle about the challenge by Fulton and Durant, but I think he's settled down now. So, set-piece once again, entrusted to Amy Cooper for Rangers. And a good understanding in the Aberdeen defence, making sure the ball goes through harmlessly to Leighton. Nicole got to that, but here's Bett, followed by McGregor. Monroe has plenty of time ahead of Joe Miller. Here's Stuart Monroe taking the throw out. There appears to be an alteration in the Aberdeen midfield in that Peter Nicholas appears to have been asked to look after Ian Durant and watch those surging runs from the middle of the field. But for the moment, it's Jimmy Nicholl. There's McCoyst. And if that's the case, Nicholas has lost Durant this time. Good clearance by McKimmy. Here's Jimmy Nicholl. Looping the ball across once again, and a good leap once more from the Aberdeen fullback, Stuart McKimmy. Good lucky that pass from Simpson, reaching bet. Here's Nicholas. Good running from Stuart McKimmy after working so hard in defence, now supporting the attack. Stuart Monroe taking no chances with Bet and Joe Muller in close attendance. Aberdeen pushing forward again at the start of this second half, trailing by two goals to one. After taking an early lead. It was back in 1981-82 that the team came back from a goal behind to win the League Cup. That was when Rangers beat Dundee United 2-1. Apart from that, seven times out of the last eight, the team that scored first won the trophy. Here's Robert Connor. Well, they missed out Faulkner with that pass. But Ian, you've been impressed by Robert Connor, I think, so far in the match. Yes, I have, actually. You know, I think he's a very good player. As You know, Aberdeen look to me, they have a lot of good young players. Quite impressed with Faulkner up the front and Joe Miller as well. well a lot hanging on Peter Nicholas for Aberdeen. And an offside flag is up against Robert Fleck. Fleck appears a little bit unhappy, and from this angle, that looked to be a very close decision indeed. And here's Connor again, doing a good job on the left for Aberdeen. Going infield to take the pass from Nicholas. And Kimmy, both fullbacks up with the attack. Kimmy trying to get through the gap and running into Stuart Munro. The free kick has been given. I rather thought that McKimmy played for that. I think there was a, ga a gap there that he couldn't really get through, Jock, but uh, the referee looked kindly on it. Lucky Walker looks very calm indeed in goal for Rangers. Once a two man wall lined up Cooper and Fleck. All the big men waiting in the middle. Simpson is there, so is McLeish. Willie Miller at the far corner of the box. There's Hewitt leaving it to Bett. 
Turned away by McGregor. A good defensive header that. He covered Willie Miller all the way in, John McGregor. So there was the far post cross from Bet. And McGregor kept his eye on the ball all the way. Okay, the goal line. Bet plays it in towards the near post. Monroe was there with Alec McLeish. It's another corner kick to Aberdeen. You see Stuart Monroe's got that right eye protected now by some sticking plaster. Billy Miller looks for the ball in the box. It's a better corner kick. Goff got to it. It's back from Miller to Connor. Good hustling tactics by Rangers, though, from defence. The hand was used by Neil Simpson. But Rangers bringing every player back to defend at corner kicks. It was Ali McCoy who was back to make that clearance. Graham Sunnis in the director's box, looking on calmly as Rangers hold on to their 2 1 lead. There's Nicol, looks too heavy with the pass forward. Well, Jimmy Nicol has his critics here in Glasgow, Ian, but he certainly has battled well for Rangers this afternoon. Well, his distribution has never been his strongest asset, Jimmy's, but I'll tell you, his tackling today has been first class. And a delightful piece of play by Cooper once again. Here's Durant. Fleck and McCoy stood up front. There's Fleck back to Durant. He really is outstanding coming from the middle of the field. Ian Durant again, striding forward purposefully, looking for the return pass from Fleck, anxious to have a shot on target. He really is an exciting young player, isn't he, Jock? You know, and to have players from midfield who can come through and, and support the attack and look for goals, it's great to see. Just didn't quite get a hold of that one. In the middle of the field is Neil Simpson for Aberdeen with Bet. These two had a great start to the match. Bet is impeded by McGregor. He kicked to Aberdeen. Well, Jim Bet is very anxious to get on with it. Absolutely. He's surely playing for keeps this afternoon. Former Rangers player, of course. And Alec McLeish always plays for keeps. He's in the box again. There's Joe Miller. Now Bet. Comes off Davy Cooper, the corner kick is awarded. And Aberdeen sent for John Hewitt to take an in-swinger. Beck is into the box as Willie Miller arrives once again, leaving only Stuart McKimmy back in the centre circle, Aberdeen. Every Rangers player inside his own box. An awkward ball, well taken by Walker. Whistle had gone in any case for a free kick for a bit of pushing, but Walker looked very calm indeed. He certainly did. I don't think he was impeded in any way because he, he came out, took the ball high and clean. Very good catch. Maybe Aberdeen have thought at half time if they if they lobbed the ball in under the crossbar, it could put him under some pressure, but he looked very confident there. He cost hundred thousand pounds when he was bought from Motherwell in 1983. And he's performed well enough this afternoon to fill the boots of Chris Woods. Here's Hewitt. Through the middle it goes, there's Willie Faulkner, and good goalkeeping again by Walker. Walker out very quickly indeed, and he was caught there by Faulkner. The Rangers defender's not at all happy about the challenge, but this ball from John Hewitt getting through the Rangers rear guard. There goes Faulkner, and a brave save by Walker. I don't think you could blame Faulkner in any way there, Jock. He had to go for the ball. It was a 50-50 between the goalkeeper and the forward. And uh, unfortunately, the walker came off the worst of ways there. Well, good, determined, brave goalkeeping. He was sharp, too, coming off his goal line. Because that really was a nasty moment for Rangers with Faulkner breaking through the central defence. Now, look at the way this ball comes through. Now, was Faulkner offside? Well, I would have thought he looked offside, certainly. Unless there's somebody very wide, but I don't think so. He certainly was offside there. Certainly appeared to be, and Nicky Walker certainly not concerned about that, having done 
so well with a save, 25 years old, and his former club mother well, Leicester City before that, it was Jock Wallace who brought him back from Leicester having taken him there in the first place. It'd be very nice if he has one appearance on one medal, wouldn't it? Well, certainly on course at the moment, with Rangers leading by two goals to one. Here's Davy Cooper. That's for Ferguson. Black made a good run. Looking to go inside. McCoyce wants a short pass, but he prefers to use Derek Ferguson behind. Durant was there to get the head flick on, but no problems for the Aberdeen defence this time. Peter Nicholas. Joe Miller. This is Jim Bett. On the far side is Connor. Good early header, but it was just misplaced. Intention was right to find John Hewitt. Well taken down by Durant. He was caught by Hewitt. And that little trip results in a free kick to Rangers. Durant appears none the worse. Another player who has had little trouble so far with injuries, Ian Durant. Richard Goff's free kick. Looking for McCoyst. The wrestling there between McCoyst and Connor. The referee decides six of one and half a dozen of the other as Connor tries to get away from McCoyst. That's good play by Connor. Shoot was closed down quickly though by Jimmy Nicholl and perhaps not the strongest part of John McGregor's game these tight situations around the opposing box so now the anticipated substitution is made by Ian Porterfield for Aberdeen it's Peter Weir who is coming on and the player going off is Neil Simpson who clearly has given his all in the match so far but not quite up to match fitness so Peter Weir goes on and there will be some reorganisation he'll go to the left side of midfield there's the background of Peter Weir what that doesn't tell you is that his transfer fee was £330,000 in 1981 Kimmy's long ball catches Hewitt offside. Now it looks as though Aberdeen have adjusted by playing Weir on the left, Joe Miller on the right, with Hewitt joining Willie Faulkner through the middle. It's now going to be very interesting to see if, uh, if Weir can take Jimmy Nicol on. I mean, on Wednesday night in the European game, he looked very lively, Peter Weir, so if we can see his flashes of that form, it could be a problem for Rangers. Came off the head of Fleck, Jimmy Nicol. Boyce with a layoff, it's collected by Ferguson. We are having to defend in his first bit of involvement in the match. Jimmy Nicol, goes McGregor, well challenged by McKimmy. Here's Peter Weir. And a clumsy late challenge there from Ferguson. The players tangle, but there's no malice, and they get on with the game as Aberdeen are stopped in the tracks by Cooper. Well, that caught Derek Ferguson coming back into his midfield role, but Cooper gets some warm applause from the Rangers fans. I think they were delighted to see that uh, Davey wanted to get involved there, you know, fight for the ball, win a tackle. It's not often you see him do that. You know, he's such a good player, but he's inclined to stay out of the game when there's a lot of uh, you know, physical involvement there. Playing a pronounced role on the left side of midfield for Rangers. There's a chance for Faulkner and Roberts goes across. And there's David Cooper. One hour of the match gone. It's 2-1 to Rangers. Kimmy is penalised for the challenge on Cooper. And I must say, in this opening 15 minute period of the second half, the Rangers do look to be in control. Yes, the, I must say that they don't look as if they're uh, in awe of Aberdeen in any way this half. They've come out, they've, you know, they're hanging on to the 2-1 the result, but they're, they're doing it in a positive manner. The from McKinney finds touch. 
and the throw will be taken by Stuart Munro. He's looking towards the bench for some instruction. There appears to be some advice coming from that area again. Oh, it's a flick for Rangers. Hustled all the way by McLeish. It's well won by McLeish. And the control from Bet was instant. And Cooper again battling back to good effect for Rangers, but losing out to Nicholas. Here's Joe Miller, that's a good early pass, and Durant came back to make the tackle on Bet. And the referee indicating to Jim Bet that he thought he died. Another player with an eye cut, seeing Durant. Jim Bet feels a bit aggrieved, but he didn't get a foul as he was challenged by Durant. Good back killer that by Hewitt. Here's Joe Miller trying to outpace Monroe. Good cross. Here's Jimmy Nicol. Scrambling the ball away towards McGregor. That appeared to be handball. The referee allows play to continue as Peter Weir picks it up for Aberdeen. Well, that's great play from Weir. And a marvellous effort in the end. Peter Weir showing the kind of talent he demonstrated so frequently in past years at Petodre. The early cross from Joe Miller. Scrambled away by Nicol. Then there appeared to be a handball by McGregor, but the advantage is allowed as we had picked it up. And look at this for close control. Making his way into a shooting area, and that certainly wasn't far away. Well, that undoubtedly would give Aberdeen lots of encouragement. Foul by Cooper on Joe Miller. The referee will want to make sure that Aberdeen can take the free kick as quickly as they want. Cooper and Fleck closing down on the kicker. Who is Jim Bett? This is Willie Miller. Now Connor. Well, that's good play again from the fullback. Across in the end, certainly not, not up to the same standard. But he certainly looked very positive indeed. Just one international cap that night against Holland. Away from home when he played so well on the left side of the Scottish midfield. It's an encouraging feature of the game, Jock, that you know players from both sides are, are wanting to take defenders on. They're all been very positive today and they're having a go and trying to get past them. And I mean the football has been terrific. Fleish going up, the high ball. Cooper plays it into Durant. And now Nickel. Headed by Miller. After Nicholas locks it into the middle of the field. Here it going up with Munro, chested down by Cooper. There's Willie Miller again. Nicholas only gets it as far as McGregor. David Cooper takes over. Oh, that's good play again from Cooper. He's now on his left foot. Here's McCoist. And a fine effort from McCoist on the turn. But it was Cooper again calling the shots coming from the middle of the field. Easing himself away from that challenge from John Hewitt. Sidestepping Nicholas, threatening to shoot, then releasing McCoyst on the right. McCoyst, I think, trying to play it across the face of the goal, playing it into the side netting. There's Cooper again, seeing more and more of the ball. That was intended for Robert Fleck. Trevor Francis now on the track, warming up. And they see him before long. That certainly would be an attacking move from Rangers. Here's John Hewitt, though, for Aberdeen. And once again, the man making the important tackle is Jimmy Nicol for Rangers. 30 years old, 73 in all Ireland caps. Walter Smith takes his seat once again between Phil Borsma and Peter McCloy. Weir towards Fulton. Weir again. There's Hewitt ahead. Retaining possession well. He still has Weir on the outside. Now can Weir take on Nickel? Capable of going either way, Peter Weir. That's a good cross. Up goes Joe Miller. Weir sends it back in. And that's John McGregor. Head, fl head flicks it out. Good defensive header that from McGregor. There's McKimmy. Up goes Goff. Uh, Nicholas, and uh, not a bad effort from Peter Nicholas on the drop. 
but good concerted attacking play this from Aberdeen Peter Weir at the heart of it all lighting that across and it was Joe Miller who couldn't direct it on target Weir kept the ball in play that was a great ball in and a good piece of defending by McGregor certainly Peter Weir has made an impact hasn't he since he's come on looks very very exciting today it goes Faulkner with Roberts appearance again by Nicol McKimmy Goff did well under pressure from Willie Faulkner now, Willie Faulkner certainly has been using his physique up front in these aerial challenges Richard Goff looks very calm indeed He's got a touch, here's Fleck, back to McCoyst, and a fine tackle by Willie Miller, McCoyst going through again. Well, a little bit overdramatic that, I think, to McCoyst. Throwing himself on the ground, trying to deceive referee Valentine, but without success. Here's Peter Weir. Miller's pass is a good one, it's Connor who breaks on the left. Weir goes past him, there's Nicholas. Well, the pressure applied by Ian Durant forced that error from Peter Nicholas. Illinois is now coming from the Rangers end midway through the second half and not too many signs at the moment that Aberdeen are likely to break down the Rangers defence but mind you that's the point where the Rangers got back in terms in the first half is Alec McLeish McGregor collects in midfield wide on the right this time is Robert Fleck Willie Miller's clearance, lots of time for Nicol, Ferguson in space ahead of him. Nicol losing out to Faulkner now, Rangers are exposed, here's Willie Faulkner, he has help inside. Peter Goff did well, cutting off that angle, but Aberdeen still in possession with Peter Weir. Making for the byline and hoping for a corner kick, he thought there was a deflection. But Jimmy Nicol will be a very relieved defender after Willie Faulkner robbed him and had that chance to race in on the Rangers' goal. Terrible mistake by Jimmy. I mean, had that one resulted in a goal, I'm sure, you know, he'd have been so disappointed because he's had such a good game. You know, he's been very, very steady today, but to make a mistake like that was, uh, was a real clangor. Is beaten by Fleck, who got it well for one so short. Just Connor again. Now Stuart McKimmy. Joe Miller hugging the right touchline now for Aberdeen. That's for McKimmy again. Now bet, but it's too far ahead. Frustration on the face of Jim Bett as he goes back. Now operating in a more central position for Aberdeen in the midfield. by Cooper Cooper again good running once more by Durant Connor is there in the middle for Aberdeen now Nicholas Nicholas wins it again with Joe Miller McKimmy towards Faulkner but he's head to the ball but Monroe was quick enough in the recovery to send it back to Walker beating McCoy in the air, there's Peter Weir Faulkner did well, this is Hewitt with the back killer intended for Faulkner but a little bit of zip appears to have gone out of that Aberdeen attack well, and I would say that uh, they're still very much in the game, Jock and, and the Rangers fans are singing obviously to keep their team going, but uh, I think they're always aware that Aberdeen, now that Peter Weir's on the field, you know, have one or two ideas and could catch him I think Aberdeen have got to get the ball to Weir 
Uh, John Hewitt there trying to be a little bit clever with the back heel just a minute ago when really all he needed to do was roll it out to Weir and, and let him go on with it. So Hewitt supporting Murray Faulkner, an attack for Aberdeen. Big McCoy screening the ball from Willie Miller. Now Ferguson. It's a Rangers throw despite the appeal of Peter Weir. Once again, the ball goes to Rangers, and they'll be quite content to work the ball up the touchline. Rangers will have the lead by two goals to one. Now Fleck, leading it to Ferguson. It's back with Nicol. Now Durant, covered by Nicholas. Ferguson immediately put under pressure by Nicholas. That's what he's so good at. Actually, it's an outstanding game today, Peter Nicholas. Here's Joe Miller trying to get away from Cooper. Cooper didn't make contact with the ball, but held up the progress of Miller. Far post cross, Walker caught in two minds. He's a great chance for Hewitt. Yes! 18 minutes left for play, Ian Porterfield comes off his bench as John Hewitt brings Aberdeen back to level terms. Well, this is a goal which Ranger of Shoe will not want to see again. Cooper trying very hard to win possession. There was Joe Miller. Now watch when the ball is in the air. Nicky Walker starts to come, changes his mind. They head out by Roberts. There was Hewitt and Walker caught in no man's land as the ball goes in. Well, I've been saying about Peter Nicholas, that's where the move started, but good work by Miller. Graham Roberts gets ahead of it. You can see Hewitt, nobody around him at all, all the time in the world. And the goalkeeper really, I think, maybe blinded a little bit by the defenders. So here's Hewitt coming forward again for Aberdeen, supported by Jim Bett. Joe Miller, the man who made that goal, wide on the right again. Driving it against Munro, and a good effort towards the near post, well taken by Nicky Walker. Well, Aberdeen now getting the lift which a goal inevitably provides. Driving that against Munro, and the left foot shot bring out a good save from Walker. So, two each. And going into the late stage of the match, remember, extra time will be required if the scores stay level. And we'll be here for every last kick of the ball in this Scorley Cup final. Remember, there has to be a winner this afternoon, even if penalty kicks are required. The Jim Betts pass across field, eventually reaches Connor. Robert Fleck battling hard for Rangers. Here's Jimmy Nicholl. Nicholl sending it back. Nicky Walker, in fairness to Walker, I think that this change of mind did not cause any real problem in defence on that occasion the goal was scored the chance for John Hewitt was too good for him to miss there goes Durant again running straight into Miller that was a superb tackle by Willie Miller obviously has something to say to the referee and I can't think why perhaps suggesting to him that was the same kind of tackle as the one which brought down McCoy and gave Cooper the opening goal for Rangers from the free kick Back from McKinney. Yes, I think you called it right there, Joe. You know, we had a discussion at halftime about that, and uh, I do feel that Miller can tackle, win the ball, and, you know, hurt people at the same time, but it's all done very fairly. There's Roberts with the header. There's Jimmy Nicol, now Ferguson. Looking for McCoy to the middle. This is header, is collected by Bett. Been under pressure by Ferguson, that's why he couldn't reach Peter Weir. So, 15 minutes left, there's the scoreline, and lots of people thought there was likely to be very few goals in the match this afternoon, such as the quality of the two defences. But we've enjoyed four goals so far, and we're bound to see the ball hit the net again before the afternoon is over. So here's Monroe going forward, here's Davy Cooper, blocked by McLeish, by Joe Miller. 
Running at Monroe. And Durant getting back. Linda showing their respect for young Joe Miller, getting players back to cover his run. There's Joe Miller, who certainly made an impact on the right flank in the last 15 minutes or so for Aberdeen. And that's a poor kick out, which gives Aberdeen the throw. Yet to strike the hand of Cooper, but that was unintentional, says referee Valentine as Ferguson comes forward, crossing John Hewitt. Good pass to Durant. Good running again by McCoyst and very alert defending by Alec McLeish, who played the ball against McCoyst for the goal kick. Well, that was top class centre half showing his experience reading that run from McCoyst well because McCoyst undoubtedly has the edge and pace on the centre half. They've kept McCoyst uh, quiet in the last 20 minutes, Jock. Um, earlier in the game, you know, McCoyst was, was causing all sorts of problems for them, but between them, uh, Miller and McLeish have sort of quieted this man down a bit. McGregor wins it from Miller. Cooper, I think, will have a free kick for the challenge, the high challenge by Stuart McKimmy on the touchline below us. Well, McKimmy goes back. Uh, Fleck has found space going in behind McKimmy. It's well blocked by the fullback. And another good tackle by McKimmy, but at the expense this time of a corner kick to Rangers. A signal for Goff and Roberts to make their way into the box. Goff, in particular, renowned for his prowess in these set pieces. And a bit of pushing by. Richard Goff as he came forward. No complaint from the Rangers number six. Not too bad when your captain is suspended, you can replace him with a 1.5 million pound defender. Bob Valentine still very much in command of this match. Came off the head of Goff. It's Ferguson and now uh, Jimmy Nicol. Ferguson again, Durant finding space, his eye off the ball as they arrived, allowing Aberdeen to come forward, there's Bet trying to send Hughes away, and look how quick he is, challenging Graham Roberts, Roberts thought he was fouled by Hewitt, Rangers have possession in any event, with Jimmy Nicol on the right, and Durant again as a player making a run into space, Getting the closer to time in the second half. Still Durant going forward inside, looking for a penalty kick, but the referee waves aside strong appeals from the Rangers fans in particular. It's McGregor who has possession again for Rangers, and Durant was slow coming back. He was offside. Well, Durant has a work from long range with the referee, but he was certainly stranded a bit when that pass came forward from McGregor. Well, a penalty appeal there, Ian. So, so, uh, yes, it looked a close one, didn't it? You know, but this is the thing about Durant. You know, he's he's so willing to get himself forward, get in the box, commit defenders, and and that one there was again Willie Miller involved. He turned inside him, I, and that actually looked like a penalty kick. It looked to me as if it was Faulkner who, who got his foot in there. Certainly, on that angle, it looked to be a fair claim from Rangers. But a corner rather, I think it was corner that got his hand. Yes, Robert Connor it yeah, was, but Conor. the referee again was well positioned. And here's Cooper. Well, that's a good play again, but running into trouble, a strong tackle from Nicholas. Here's Derek Ferguson with a shooting chance. Still Ferguson trying to adjust the ball for a shot at goal. And there's McLeish heading clear. Cooper is in trouble on the ground. And Rangers will certainly want him back in the play. He's and a very important factor in the second half. Now Durant. Taking on Connor. It's a good tackle this time, a crisp tackle from Connor. Peter Weir picks up the loose ball. Billy Faulkner's head flick. Switch of golf. Ferguson tackled by Nicholas. Hewitt looks for the ball. He appeared to be tackled unfairly by 
Ferguson, but the referee on the spot allows play to go on, and it's back with Walker. Roberts directing traffic. So there may be a, se a substitution for Rangers, I think. Some activity there, although Peter Francis remains well wrapped up as Jim Lathan comes off his line to cut off the ball through the middle. So nine minutes of the 90 left for play. Rangers two, Aberdeen two, and extra time staring us in the face at the moment as Miller breaks on the right again for Aberdeen. Coming inside Monroe and running straight into Richard Goff. It's still Joe Miller. Now McKimmy stepping away from Cooper. Joe Miller back to bet. It was Faulkner! Yes! Willie Faulkner's header and Aberdeen are ahead. Nine minutes from time. Willie Faulkner's header. It was Joe Miller who did all the hard work. Battling away despite losing that tackle with Goff. Still managed to get the ball wide from McKimmy initially. McKimmy going forward towards the byline. Then it came back. It was Miller again who set it up for. Bet, and look at that header from Willie Faulkner. What a delightful goal by Aberdeen. It was some terrific football, Joe Miller involved, and again McKinney involved, and a lovely ball at the end of the day, wasn't it, by Bet? Beautiful flighted ball and a great header. The Rangers have it all to do again as McCoy goes up. And a fine save by Leighton. But what a cup final we're enjoying this afternoon at Hamden. Aberdeen took the lead, Rangers overhauled them, and now Aberdeen have come right back to take the lead once again. An offside flag was up against Joe Miller, I think, so it wasn't really Faulkner in the middle. But Joe Miller did so well for that goal, battled so hard using his skill and then tremendous determination. It's a glove's head out of the Coist underneath it, it's away by Nicholas. And Eric Ferguson snatching at the shot. Now there will be a change made by Rangers. They're going to make a substitution. And it's Trevor Francis who is going to come on. And he will replace Derek Ferguson, who's played the bulk of the second half with his stockings and his ankles, which seems to reflect a little bit of fitness problem. So off goes Ferguson, we'll see Francis I think wide on the right with Cooper on the left as Rangers throw everything into attack in the closing stages, off goes Derek Ferguson and Trevor Francis goes on what a tremendous background he has in international European football and McLeish knocking the ball in the air and John Hewitt was caught I think in line with Jimmy Nicholl which makes him offside Aberdeen somewhat frustrated about that decision but I thought it was right possibly, Joe Miller was clear on the right actually they'd switched the ball in that direction so John McGregor has dropped back and Richard Goff has now gone to join Ali McCoist up front Goff taking on the role which brought an equaliser against Celtic last week and look at that sea of red and white and then from the north looked to be in course for a dramatic score cut run. well the Aberdeen fans have been a little bit quiet because obviously Rangers no more songs in there but they're singing now there's Francis now David Cooper great play from Cooper a super chance for Rangers and it's cleared in the end by McLeish queuing up in the middle for that pass back from Cooper from the byline what a chance it was and delightful play once again from David Cooper who looks close to his best once again Cooper to Monroe, five minutes left for play as Monroe's cross is blocked by Nicholas Peter Nicholas has dropped right back to join McLeish and Miller to cope with the inevitable Rangers onslaught in the late stages Here's Graham Roberts going forward. John McGregor has dropped back to centre-back beside Roberts, has now pushed himself forward to Richard Goff, playing as a striker once more. Here's David Cooper. 
Lofting it in early. It's won by Connor. Dots header. There's no one up for Aberdeen. They're all back defending as Nickel returns it. Roberts with the header. There's Ian Durant and Fleck. As Robert Fleck. He ties it up again at three apiece. But it was the intrusion of Graham Roberts which made all the difference. Just watch as Jimmy Nichols' ball is flighted forward. It's Roberts who challenges Villa successfully. Durant sets it up and Fleck knocks it home with his left foot. You were, you were quite right, Jock. It was Graham Roberts, a tremendous challenge. You look at him, he must have run 15 yards, beat Miller to the ball, and when it was knocked on there, there was Fleck, about eight yards out, tucked it in the net. What a cup final this is. Uh, a little question mark there about whether there may have been an offside decision as the header came down from Roberts, but the referee looked at the linesman, got no signal, and allowed the goal to stand, so three each. What a scoreline. Nobody could have imagined that with such... Tremendous defences on view. McKimmy plays it inside. Cooper's clearance. Good header by McLeish. And now Rangers have altered their setup once again. They've brought Richard Goff back to centre back. They're going to remain with their prepared formula for the closing minutes now that things are back in level terms. The Rangers fans back in joyful mood. There's Jim Bett, that was towards Hewitt, but there's Goff back at centre-back again. Still is McKinney, now Joe Miller. Nicholas to Miller, a bad first touch by Joe Miller, allowing Roberts to make the challenge. Well, Joe Miller's control is usually superb, but he didn't colour that pass as well as I'm sure he wanted to. Here's John Hewitt. Playing a delicate ball towards rear. Nicholas, what a fine pass once again. Jim Vett. Very two-footed. Ricky Walker commanding his area, telling Graham Roberts to leave it to him. This flick. Tackle was by McLeish. Well, I must confess, I certainly would have no complaint at all if we could watch another half hour of this tremendous entertainment. I think if you're an Aberdeen fan or a Rangers fan at home at the moment, you'll be holding on to the edge of your seat. Huh? Tremendous entertainment. McGregor and Bent clashing in that very strong exchange, and the offside flag halts the progress of John Hewitt. Looks askance towards the near side linesman, David Brownlee. And there's Francis. McCoy with the header down to Durant. He's away from McLeish, it's still Durant. Trying to come near room for a shot, but that's a good pass towards Francis at the corner flag. A high looping cross up goes McKimmy. Here's John McGregor. To take that on his right foot, and that's not his favoured one. What a good chance again set up as Durant found Francis, and few better for a good swing cross to the right than Trevor Francis. McKimmy did very well indeed with that head clearance. There was John McGregor trying to set himself quickly enough for an accurate shot. I think Trevor Francis will be a key man now. If, if the game goes into extra time because you know he's such a good passer to the ball he got good service up to McCoy's and play we have the header from Cooper McLeish beaten to the ball by McCoy Miller gets there though ahead of Fleck they fault now Nicole playing it wide to Francis there's Francis wide now Jimmy Nicole Ian Durant so it's John McGregor. Now uh, Monroe. So here's Ali McCoy turning on the ball with McLeish, supported by Cooper. Here's Fleck. Trying to turn inside the box. Robert Connors header. Fleck again couldn't put that properly. Billy Miller's header. 
Good dummy by Hewitt. Joe Miller well tackled by Jimmy Nichol. John Hewitt, the 90 minutes have come and gone, we're into time added on for stoppages, in normal time with 50 minutes of extra time awaiting us, and this can be a dramatic last minute winner, here's Peter Weir taking on Nickel. Bill Weir going inside, too high for Bet. Monroe is there, now it's with McKimmy, but there goes the final whistle, the 90 minutes are up, the full time score, Rangers 3, Aberdeen 3, you won't miss one second of extra time, but before that, we'll take a short break, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Strathsport Cup Final Special, true to say that that is one of the great Hamden Cup Finals that you have just been watching. The players are out on the park just having a breather before the half hour of extra time gets underway, as you can see. Time for a quick comment, I think, from our two studio guests who I can say praise for the performances of both sets of players. Mark, that really was an epic second half, wasn't it? Yeah, a different class. Uh, what we've got here is uh, two teams very determined to lift the trophy, and I think it's going to go to the very last kick of the ball here. Mm -hmm. Well, but that second half was really pulsating with so much good stuff in it, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the first half and the second half, you know, it's yeah. had everything, you know. Yes. Goals and goal mouth instantly. Yeah. The, the goal which uh, which gave us extra time that made it 3-3 three, three was um, was a tremendous goal because uh, it looked as if Aberdeen were hanging on, just hanging on, then that great header of Yeah, Roberts. Roberts has made some space and he's put the ball in and Robert Flex put it away brilliantly. Yes. Suspicion and of offside, yes. Ian Durant, but... Yes. It's, it's and, and again, Mark, as we've seen so many times, Durant willing to get up with the action where the action is. Yep, arriving at the perfect moment, just on the end of uh, Robert's header, and he's done that the whole game. Any any chances that Rangers have had have, have arrived from uh, Durant making these runs. Right, the stage set for half an hour of extra time. An absolutely marvellous game so far, Jock, and I think it's true to say that we may well have still some drama to come. There's no doubt at all about that, Arthur, because remember, if it's all square after extra time, we go into a penalty shootout. Now, can you imagine taking a penalty kick in this situation after 120 minutes of football? But I fancy we may see a goal or two, though, in the half hour to come. The referee, Bob Valentine, remains very cool in the middle of all this hectic activity as Aberdeen get extra time underway. So there was no other change during that uh, pep talk after the 90 minutes from either side, with Trevor Francis on for Derek Ferguson for Rangers, and we have Peter Weir replacing Neil Simpson for Aberdeen. They're still to come if required, and Abby Cohen for Rangers, and Brian Grant for Aberdeen. But here's Willie Faulkner, eased off the ball by Roberts. Here's a good look in the face of the Rangers captain. That's a free kick, it is. And every attack now, in view of the fact that each side has scored three times, every attack now has a buzz of anticipation around the stadium. So once again, Rangers pull everyone back to defend. It's Peter Nicholas showing his ability with both feet, taking this free kick. No, he's leaving it to Peter Weir. There's Weir's free kick. The header comes in from Willie Faulkner, but he didn't get any real power behind it, although he did find a gap in the box. That was a, a definite chance there uh, by Willie Faulkner. Had a clear header, Jock, bad marking by Rangers. There's Jim Bett. Well, the ebb and flow of this match has been quite remarkable, with both sides enjoying periods on the ascendancy. And there's Jim Bett's throw. It's Hewitt allowed to turn by Roberts. That's a good tackle. And a foul by Hewitt. A tackle from the back on Roberts. And the referee is going to have at least a word with John Hewitt. He's only used the yellow card once so far in the match, which is one other good aspect of this occasion. That was Alec McLeish. Who was booked, but Roberts is all right. It's never been a dirty game at all. I mean, it's been contested to the full, but never, I would say, has there been really a, any nasty incidents. McLeish with the header into midfield. Bet and McGregor together, as they have been so often in the match, and that was a foul by McGregor on Bet, just pulling the Aberdeen player back as he tried to reach the ball. Well, 
Well, inevitably, the pace has dropped. And we certainly can't blame any of the players for that. And of course, with fatigue setting in, there could be uncharacteristic errors in defence. Here's Joe Miller, who played such a vital part in the Aberdeen third goal. It's another good cross, and Roberts was there ahead of Faulkner. A push by Joe Miller on Ian Durant, well spotted by referee Valentine. McCoyce there, amazingly, has not scored despite Rangers finding that three times, although he played a vital part in the first and second goal, which Rangers scored in the first half. Fouled for the free kick, which resulted in Cooper's opener for Rangers. And then the final pass for Ian Durant's second. Down goes Willie Miller, fouled by Fleck. And the referee quickly to the scene of the action to make certain things don't get out of control well it may be late in Bob Valentine's career but he hasn't lost any of his fitness head flick from Faulkner with Joe Miller gets a run on the right from McKimmy uses that as a decoy to go inside but ran into a sea of blue jerseys Cooper picking out Francis on the right. Fleck makes a run, so does McCoy, so does Durant through the middle, and it's Jimmy Nicol who comes from the back. A short pass intended for Fleck. Supporting player is Francis. It came off Peter Weir, but an easy one for Jim Layton in the end. So if you've had the misfortune to miss any of the action before now, I can tell you we're in extra time in the score League Cup final with the score Rangers 3, Aberdeen 3. First period of extra time, Victor Goff nudges the ball away, screens it from Miller. Here's Francis, twisting away from Robert Connor. He still hasn't shaken off the fullback though. Here's Fleck. Holding it up from Willie Miller. Francis again. That's for McGregor. The dummy tries to get the ball through to McCoist. Nicholas Hewitt. Very tough pass for Jim Bett to receive that one from John Hewitt. And Rangers again enjoying a good spell and attack. Here's Durant. Nickel. Francis. Breaks kindly for Durant. Here's David Cooper getting a shout from Rangers fans to watch his back, but it's still Joe Miller who wins possession. Being invited inside by Stuart Monroe, the fullback. He doesn't want to be beaten on the outside. Good fullback play, forcing Miller into the congested area in the middle. Here's Nicholas. Peter Weir with a layoff. Hewitt trying to ease it towards Bet, but Roberts was more positive. Here's Durant. Jim Bett going all the way through. Here's McCoist. A rare miss from Ali McCoist with a goal beckoning. But another magnificent move from Rangers, inspired by Durant's running power. Bett couldn't get to him. He threaded that pass through the gap. McCoist sprinting clear and steering the shot wide. Well, you'd have taken bets that McCoist had to score there. A beautifully weighted pass by Durant, now there, you know, he could have done two or three things, possibly the best thing would have been to go round the goalkeeper, uh, because it looked to me as if Leighton had come out and sort of gone down, but what a chance that was. Well, look at that replay, I thought that perhaps the ball bobbled slightly as he went to strike it, but nevertheless, Aberdeen survived, the Rangers coming forward again with Davy Cooper, trying to get away from McKinney, he's down flat on his face, the referee's so close to the action, he really cannot be challenged for Whatever verdict he offers. Down goes Miller. The tackle was by Monroe. The free kick has been given, although Miller was certainly going nowhere there. He was dragging the ball out of play in any event, but he certainly was fouled. McKimmy with a free kick. Well won by Goff. Nicholas. Back killer again by Hewitt. Here's Peter Weir. 
Bring it wide for Hewitt. Needs all his pace as Roberts comes across. He timed that well, the Rangers captain. Peter Weir through the legs of Nickel. He was fouled all right. That's what they call a nutmeg, playing it through the defender's legs. Free kick to Aberdeen. Peter Weir is very accurate with these set pieces around the box. I like the police joining Willie Faulkner for Aberdeen. The outswinger, Faulkner goes up, and they got his head to the ball once again, Willie Faulkner. Certainly a menacing figure inside the opposing penalty box. He's certainly a tall lad, isn't he? I mean, he's not particularly brawny, you would say, because he's still to fill out, but uh, he's certainly a tall lad, and he looks a very useful player. Up goes McLeish. And those pass is picked up by Davy Cooper. Fleck. Durant's made the run again. He's in space. Still Fleck. And Jim Leighton taking no chances about the possibility of that going wide. Another good opportunity this as Cooper finds Fleck through the middle. Durant made a run through the inside left channel, but Fleck chose to go it alone, and that's a good save from Leighton. Spinning awkwardly off the head of Nicol. He had the run by Hewitt and Roberts judged it well. Showing his confidence in Nicky Walker and complaining that Jimmy Nicol didn't call for the ball. And Miller doing a bit of claiming on the shoulders of Robert Fleck. I think again Willie Miller indicating his disagreement with the verdict. Fleck was the player fouled and Rangers have the free kick. Durant being waved upfield to join Richard Goff. There's Jimmy Nicol. The header away was by McKimmy as far as Durant. Francis coming inside, getting up well. Trevor Francis got his head to the ball, but it's gone for the goal kick. Well, not renowned for his heading ability, Francis. Well, having said that, remember the goal he scored in the European Cup final for Forrest? I was there in Malmo, a good header. 1979, I think. It was against Malmo, wasn't it, in Munich? Yeah. Roberts, commanding figure, coming to meet the ball. There's McKimmy, he must be accurate with the pass back. McCoy was putting him under pressure. Durant away from his marker Peter Nicholas Nicholas is still on the ground as Francis takes it up on the right for Rangers that's one for Jim Leighton to take comfortably I think not a good enough ball for a goalkeeper of Leighton's quality Here's McCoyst with a layoff to Cooper. Nicholas has recovered after taking a knock a few moments ago. Ray Faulkner trying to get in in front of Richard Goff. That's good play from Goff. Durant running into Weir. He gets a break of the ball. Still Durant. He has Francis on the right. Still going all the way himself through the middle. And stopped by that superb tackle from Willie Miller. Here's Stewart. Flip from the back. Willie Miller went in for that. There's a Rangers player in trouble. I think it's John McGregor. And the referee trying to sort things out. It's John McGregor who's in serious trouble after a clash with Willie Miller. The ball was bouncing as Miller went for it. I didn't see anything untoward about the challenge. But there's no question that John McGregor's in serious trouble. And the referee is calling over. Willie Miller, there's what it's all about. The first tackle by Miller. In fact, it's Miller who's going to be booked. Well, Ian, he said to me to play the ball. 
Well, he, he, he'd come out of a defence, he'd made a very good tackle on the edge of his box, and then he continued when Aberdeen got the ball, and then he got involved in three tackles in the road, but, but it looks to me as if uh, McGregor's got a bad one, I think they'll be bringing stretches on for him. When a player lies like that and he doesn't make a move, you know he's hurt. Well, there's no question that John McGregor's in serious trouble, and remember, he had a very bad knee injury. Willie Miller wants to have a debate with some of the Rangers players, and that really is foolish. There's no need at all for him to become involved any further. Whether or not that booking he feels was unfair, he's got to get out of the road and stay away from things. John McGregor, as I was saying, had a very severe knee injury, which he sustained when he was on loan with St. Martin from Liverpool. And he was out of the game for many months with that, and it looked to me, as he was down there, that he was clutching his knee again. I actually think it, it may be a bone damage, you know, I mean, it, it could well be a, you don't like to say it, but it, I mean, it, it could well have uh, a broken leg. Well, let's check on this once again, Ian, here's what it's all about. Well, the ball was certainly there and it was in the air when the challenge was made. Well, the two of them challenged for the ball. Willie Miller went with a straight leg and, you know, if you tried to kick it, it looked to me as if McGregor was trying to kick the ball and Willie was going to block it. And that's when, you know, serious injuries happen. But it's not to say that the, both boys are, are going in there to hurt each other because they were going for the ball. Well, I thought that when they both went for the ball with complete conviction. Walter Smith has been on to reorganise things, but regardless of all that, that is unquestionably the saddest sight in football. The stretcher removing John McGregor from the action. And he certainly does appear to be in very serious trouble. Clearly in a lot of pain as he is removed from the field. So the replacement is Avi Cohen wearing number 14. Now I fancy referee Bob Valentine is entering a crucial phase in the match as far as he's concerned because I feel that the Rangers players think that, it's, that there was some malice in the part of Willie Miller and clearly Willie Miller in particular thinks he was harshly treated. Well, I I do, I do think Rangers think there was intent by Miller, but I'm not so sure. There's Avi Cohen's history, very experienced player indeed. The header away was by Connor. Faulkner plays it wide. This is Jim Bent. No room to go anywhere except back. Willie Miller gets the treatment from the Rangers fans. There's McKimmy playing it through the middle. Roberts is there for Rangers with an accurate header. Monroe. The first 15 minutes of extra time have come and gone, but of course there was that very lengthy delay for treatment to John McGregor, so there will be some time to add on. There's Peter Weir back in defence for Aberdeen. Hurtling away from Cohen. from Leighton, up goes Goff to win it cleanly from Faulkner. Well, Rangers don't have to shovel the team around too much because uh, Abbey Cohen can play in midfield and he's just slotted into the position that John McGregor had been playing. Yes, that's the marking role on Jim Bett in midfield. And no question that time, John Hewitt was offside. So again, the pace seems to drop even further as these players feel the pressure of this titanic cup fight. Willie Miller, the target of Rangers supporters' abuse. All the involvement in that incident with John McGregor being stretched off. That's a misunderstanding. The pass was intended for Fleck, but McLeish has some time until McCoyst arrives. Cooper inside towards Durant. His control let him down for a split second. Cooper has it for Rangers, now Fleck, turning and twisting, trying to link with McCoist, and it was McKimmy who did a good job there for Aberdeen, as McCoist rifled the shot in, there was a look towards the linesman for offside. I certainly thought he was offside here, as, as Rangers made the break, I thought McCoist had got himself into an offside position. So again, a matter of no concern, because... No goal resulted, and there goes the whistle to end half the first period of extra time. It's half time in extra time. 
Harry McCoy has been working tirelessly up front for Rangers. He goes back, the scoreline tells the story. Rangers 3, Aberdeen 3. And just a quick reminder for latecomers of what happened. In nine minutes, Jim Betts scored from the penalty spot for Aberdeen. In 21 minutes, Davy Cooper scored from a free kick. Then Ian Durant gave Rangers the lead before half-time. John Hewitt and Willie Faulkner turned the tables and Rangers with two goals for Aberdeen in the second half until Robert Fleck got the equaliser five minutes from time. So, here we go with the last 15 minutes of action. Referee Valentine checks his watch. And it always strikes me as a great pity for either side to lose in the second period of extra time. Well, that, you always don't want the game to go to penalties, Jock, in this situation, you know. You'd rather see some, one of the teams score a goal. Fleck towards McCoyst. Pass goes wide for Francis. Here's Cohen. Kimmy has done well once again for Aberdeen in defence. He covers his central defence extremely well, Stuart McKimmy, and gets up well for high balls for one of such short stature. But he had to concede a corner kick on that occasion, and it's Trevor Francis who takes it. Fish going up with Goff. Here's Graham Roberts. Appear to use a hand to control the ball, so it's a free kick. That goal from Roberts will not count. He hasn't opened his scoring account this season for Rangers. I have a lot of time for Graham Roberts. You know, I, I'm the man responsible for bringing him into professional football. I, I signed him as a 16-year-old when I was manager of Portsmouth, and uh, I've seen him grow in, in physique as well as stature in the game. I think he's a tremendous player. So the high ball is won by Roberts. It's with uh, Trevor Francis. The square ball is collected by Cooper. Good running by Cohen. Chance for the long range shot, perhaps, but they prefer the pass towards Fleck. And that had to be of precision accuracy. It wasn't quite, so Leighton was able to clear it up for Aberdeen. Munro's header. McLeish wins it for Aberdeen. Good header again by Munro, ignoring that cut to his right eye. Cooper tried to play that right into the middle towards Durant. A misunderstanding there, but it's come to no harm for Rangers as Cohen picks it up. Roberts plays it to the right for Francis. Nichols sets off on a run. Francis has the option of Jimmy Nichol. Well, tried to play it into a gap around the box. It came off Willie Faulkner. Well, the goal. League Cup final has never before been settled by a penalty kick decider, but we are looking more and more as though that may be the case this afternoon. Here's Peter Weir. Jim Bett under pressure from Cooper, his former teammate. Nicholas looking for Joe Miller at Stuart Monroe's clearance. Up goes McLeish. Cohen. Could have controlled that, I think, but McKimmy turns it back for Leighton. Joe Miller's head flick. Goff, a very accurate ball towards Monroe. Up goes Fleck. Tried to control that into the path of McCoyst. Nicholas. Joe Miller appeared to be caught by Monroe, but the referee saw nothing amiss, allows Cohen to bring it forward for Rangers. Here's McCoyst. Never dangerous for Rangers. Playing it square towards Durant, and he was caught on the wrong foot as the ball came inside. He couldn't adjust quickly enough to get into the right stride for a shot at goal. You know, Jock, four of the goals that have been scored this afternoon have been scored in this right-hand goal as, as we're looking. I think the wind is blowing down the field in that direction. It may be of some assistance to the team attacking. It's a careless one from Nicholas, an error which allows Cooper to come forward. And the pass is beginning to lose their accuracy now as the players become more and more tired. As 
been a very tough match for both sets of players. Physically demanding right from the start. There's Peter Weir. Oh, it's a neat touch. Played out by Durant. Throw to Nicholas. There's John Hewitt. Running into trouble as he goes inside. It's Roberts who plays it forward. Nicholas thumbs it back. Durant's running power again. Wins the ball for Rangers. Here's Davy Cooper. Oh, that's a precision pass for Trevor Francis towards Roberts in the middle. And the recovery was made by Peter Weir getting back to make the challenge on Roberts. And that was a very important piece of defensive play by Peter Weir. Superb pass by Cooper. Francis playing it inside for Roberts. And the shot deflected wide by Weir. Tremendous save, Jock, wasn't it? I mean, Robert Fleck just got a nice little flick on. You'll see the, the back post is clear as well. And there's Jim Layton, got the touch, and then pounced on it. And now it's Aberdeen's turn coming forward. Faulkner sets it up for Peter Weir on the left. He's away from Nicol. That's a super cross. And it was Richard Goff. Initially, he got his head to the ball with Joe Miller and Willie Faulkner and John Hewitt all waiting. So Goff saved the day there for Rangers, no question about that. Nicky Walker in the end, turning it over for the corner. So Peter Weir lines up the corner kick for Aberdeen. Headed away again by Goff. Nicholas returns it. Roberts nods it down to Weir. Far post ball, that's well taken by Walker. Now that was a very important catch by the Rangers keeper. With Joe Miller waiting for an error. Goff's initial header clear. When it came back inside from Peter Weir, it was Graham Roberts who nodded it wide. And then it was Dickie Walker catching that cleanly. Peter Weir and now Nichols. Through the middle is John Hewitt. Bet asking a lot of McKimmy. And David Cooper takes no chances, turning it out for the throw. Well, Cooper certainly has played very well indeed for Rangers this afternoon. This is Jim Bet. Joe Miller. Trying to ease his way away from Stuart Munro, but needs help, gets it from McKimmy. And Bet. This is Nicholas. Willie Faulkner nodding it on. He got too much on the ball to deflect it towards Hewitt. Fatigue is certainly taking over, Ian. I think so, but. I was just thinking when you were when you said that Cooper had played well, it'd be difficult to, to say that uh, there was any player that played badly on the day. I think everybody's played well. There's Francis, one of the fresher men in the field. Here's Davy Cooper. Can he try one from long range with this deadly left foot? Still gets it again. The flag is up against McCoy. That would have been a penalty, I've no doubt. But the flag had been up before the tackle. Well, a let off again for Aberdeen. Cois made the run. And when the ball comes through, he's caught offside. I've no doubt at all that was a, a penalty kick had he been onside. One, another one of those breathtaking incidents. But I mean, the game has been packed with them. And I don't think I've enjoyed a game so much for a long time. It really has been a superb match. 
A reminder, the scoreline shows Rangers 3, Aberdeen 3. Well into the second period of extra time. Miller and Fleck are together. Miller stands as going well. Back it goes to Jim Layton, who may turn out to be absolutely crucial in the penalty shootout. Mickey Walker and Jim Layton must be thinking along these lines by now. With Jimmy Nicko with a clearance. Hewitt could keep the ball in play if he chose, but this stage in the match prefers to accept the throw. There's Francis with his fresh legs, allowing Cooper to take over. That'll be a Rangers throw, it appeared to come off Peter Nicholas. Here's Cohen. Durant was caught as he came inside. John Hewitt has been penalised. Inside the final five minutes, Richard Goff makes his way forward for Rangers. There's Ardy Cohen. Betts header. Joe Miller screening it from Monroe. Playing it sideways for Bet once again. McKimmy goes ahead of him. That's good play from Aberdeen. Inside is Miller. Well, I think he was lucky there, but he certainly was brave too. And that's Cramp, I think, catching his right leg. Joe Miller at a vital moment, losing his footing. Cooper inside towards McCoy. And the outstretched leg of William Miller cuts off the pass intended for Fleck. Joe Miller's in trouble, there's no question about that. I fancy we'll see an Aberdeen substitution any second now. There's Francis, Jimmy Nichols steaming up on his outside, but Francis coming all the way himself. What a dream end it would be to his first major final in Scotland if Francis could have found the net. It was Durant setting it up with a pass wide to the right. And Nick, uh, Francis with one thought in mind, to get inside and get a shot on target. <laughs> now only three minutes left. Roberts with the header. There's Alec McLeish. Goff calls for the ball to Graham Roberts. Now it's Durant, look at the power coming forward again. Now Fleck, here is McCoy with a great chance for the winner and it's blocked by Miller a sweeping move from Rangers once again and the danger's not over for Aberdeen as Francis rifles in the shot what a match this is action right to the end but McCoy must think he's been the man today who's missed a couple of chances and again that was a chance and you've got to say well done Aberdeen because they crowded the ball there but you only sometimes only get a split second to react to these things and then with Trevor Francis of course got it he blasted it past the left hand post but McCoy I think has had a couple of little chances to do of course that chance coming to justify the tired legs this may have had some impact on things Faulkner plays it forward Hewitt is caught well offside Joe Miller indeed was also offside well penalty kicks are looming this final will be decided on penalties if the three-all scoreline is not changed within the next couple of minutes. There's Jimmy Nicol. Now Cohen. Well, I'm not really sure what he had in mind with that ball forward. And he certainly doesn't have the excuse of tired legs coming on an extra time. There's Connor. Bet and Nicholas together. It's Bet who keeps possession for Aberdeen. Well, it's not the way to win the match, but it keeps possession for Aberdeen for the moment. The one minute left in extra time. Rangers three, Aberdeen three. Good header by Goff. Here's Fleck. On either side, snatch a dramatic winner before the end. 
A foul by Bet on Cooper. And here's Durant running into the challenge from Nicholas. Roberts with a long ball forward looking for Francis. Connor keeping the ball in play, helped on by Weir. Durant again. Like it comes to Roberts. Fleece letting that bounce, but Fleck stepped in ahead of him. And Francis couldn't reach it. Well, I've no doubt the players will be very relieved indeed to hear the final whistle. Apart, of course, from the five who still have to become involved for each side in the penalty kick decider. Or perhaps more than five. Here's John Hewitt. Well, showing remarkable fitness and stamina, but it's too late. There goes the whistle to end the match. 120 minutes of all-out action. Finishing with that scoreline, it's Rangers 3, Aberdeen 3, but now goes to a penalty shootout. You'll see it all in a couple of minutes after this short break. But for the deciding penalty kicks, discussion is going on among the players. Walter Smith and Phil Bors are out there for Rangers. Jimmy Mullen and Ian Porterfield for Aberdeen. And the linesman taking a note of the kickers. So we're going into this penalty decider. Aberdeen, incidentally, were the first... British club ever to become involved in a penalty shootout. Back in 1970 in the European Cup with this cup they played Honved of Budapest in a penalty shootout and sadly for Ian Porterfield they lost that one. So it's been that length of time we've had these penalty kick finishes but it's the first time in the League Cup final and the score League Cup final that, uh, that we've had a penalty shootout. It's going to happen in front of the Rangers fans, a toss of the coin decided that. And the first penalty kick will be taken by Rangers and by Ali McCoist. So McCoist, the regular Rangers penalty taker, he scored three out of three so far this season. And all the players having to remain in the centre circle as McCoist prepares to take the vital opening kick against Jim Layton. McCoy's continues his excellent penalty kick form, gives Rangers the lead. Crucial, of course, for the first one to go in for the side taking it. Jim Layton guessed right but couldn't get across in time. So 1-0 it is to Rangers. And it'll be Jim Bett, who is the regular Aberdeen penalty taker, who will take the first one for them. He scored, remember, in the ninth minute of the match make that his fourth successful penalty out of four this season and Nicky Walker could become a major hero if he can stop enough of these penalties in front of his fans behind that goal he's inventing a long run up and he picked a different corner this time with equal effect and the match for really played it to Walker's right that's what Walker thought he would do again but Bet deceived him so, one each it is, and Betts can now relax as far as his contribution to the whole affair is concerned, and it's Davy Cooper who goes next for Rangers. So, another expert in the penalty spot, remember the one he scored for Scotland against Wales in Cardiff to get Scotland on course for the World Cup. Here he goes again. Absolutely deadly. Apologies the Rangers fans. He could put them on either side this time. He sends late in the wrong way. And there's the score line. But that's with Aberdeen with a penalty kick in hand, and it'll be taken by Peter Nicholas. Experienced player showing the way for Aberdeen at the moment. Peter Nicholas has scored three times this season for Aberdeen. And another crucial moment for him. A disaster for Aberdeen and for Peter Nicholas in particular. The shot clipping the top of the bar and going over. And here's the penalty kick which may well give the cup to Rangers. Skinning off the top of the bar, Nicholas dejected as he walks back to join his teammates. And it's Robert Fleck now. The Rangers have the advantage. One miss from Aberdeen. Robert Fleck again who has scored from the penalty spot for Rangers before comfortably stroked into the net 
And it's all going Rangers' way at the moment. Beautifully taken once more with Leighton going to his right. The ball is scoped in the opposite corner. So one miss so far from Aberdeen. It's Peter Weir who must score to keep Aberdeen in with a chance. That's well taken by Weir. Left Walker with no hope at all with that one. And we've seen some very high-class penalties, apart from the one missed by Peter Nicholas, all the rest have been beauties which have left the keepers helpless. And now Trevor Francis. The fourth kicker for Rangers. Now Jim Layton has to conjure up a save to get Aberdeen back on terms. There's Francis, a two-step run-up. Or is he going to replace the ball in the spot? Well, this can't do his nerves any good at all, even with his experience. A very short run up from Francis. But thoroughly effective, and Leighton is frustrated. He guessed right that time. He just wasn't quick enough to get across to his right. Now, if the next penalty kick is missed by Aberdeen, Rangers will have won the Skull League Cup. Francis goes back. Congratulations to the teammates of John Hewitt now for Aberdeen. He must score to keep Aberdeen in with any kind of chance. The Rangers fans beginning to anticipate victory. And here are the celebrations. Here's Hewitt against the Gilwell. Well, not struck with too much conviction, but it was good enough to find the net. 4-3 it is, and it's Ian Durant who will come up. And there's Hewitts again, he's dropped it at the corner. So, a bit of prayer, I think, for Joe Miller as... Leighton prepares to face Ian Durant. Now, it certainly would be fitting if Durant took the final kick to win the cup for Rangers. If Durant scores, Rangers are the winners. There will be no need for any other kick. Perfectly taken by Durant. Rangers have won the Skull League Cup after a match packed full of drama. Here's the penalty kick which won it in the end for Rangers. Leighton again was helpless. A perfect scoring record for Rangers. Five penalties out of five. The fifth from Aberdeen doesn't matter at all. And the celebrations now begin in front of the Rangers fans. Ejection of course for Aberdeen who contributed so much to a marvellous final. It was three each after 90 minutes, three each after extra time. And now in the penalty shootout, it's Rangers who are the winners. Well, Ian, have you got your breath back? Well, you have to feel for Willie Miller and his team, you know. They made a tremendous contribution to the match. And so Willie Miller dejected the Rangers players prepare for the presentation. We'll be right back for that, so don't go away. The Transport Cup final. Thank the game that had us uh, in great excitement here in the studio. Well, the players are now just going up to receive their medals, so let's go back now to Hamden Park as Rangers go up to collect their winners' medals. There's still a tremendous atmosphere inside Hamden. There's the trophy it was all about, the Skull League Cup. And there comes Graham Roberts, the Rangers captain, in the absence of the suspended Terry Butcher, to take the trophy from the sponsors, John McKenzie, the chairman of the director of the Brewery Company, and it's Graham Roberts who takes the handshake from Ian Gillettley, the league president, and his wife, Mrs Gillettley, who presents the trophy to Graham Roberts and just wait for the reception from the Rangers fans. The trophy is shown, and there's Stuart Monroe going through Trevor Francis, who came on as substitute, so did Abby Cohen. I wonder what they think of their first ever major Scottish final. Jimmy Nicholl goes through it, a fine match in defence for Rangers. And Nicky Walker, a dream medal for him. And a fine match, and there's a very happy sight. John McGregor, fit enough to take his place after being carried off in a stretcher. Derek Ferguson was substituted also. There goes Robert Black, who got the vital equaliser to make it three apiece before the end of the 90 minutes. Davy Cooper, who had such a splendid match. There's Richard Goff, his first match in the League Cup this season, and a winner's medal to show for it. Ali McCoy, who didn't find the net, but played so well for Rangers. And there's the man of the match, Ian Durant, the last player through for Rangers, having won 
his medal and winning the Man of the Match award. So the Rangers players now making their way onto the field to take the acclaim of their fans. And what a tremendous afternoon's entertainment it has been. Rangers looking so far out of things early in the match. Aberdeen taking the lead, but then David Cooper rifling home a free kick which turned the complexion of the match in the first half. From then on, it was end-to-end -end stuff, ending all square until the penalty kicks. So Ian Archer is now on the track with Nicky Walker. Mickey, did you ever think it'd end like that? Never. What a cup final. I had everything. Everything. I mean, I just feel sick for Aberdeen. I mean, big jumped in for a foot long. And he's lying over there. It's just the way it happens. What were the nerves like in that penalty decider? What nerves? <laughs> Too bad to mention, Arthur. It's terrible. Lost few another. I mean... Well, there goes Ian Durant with the trophy and Ian Archer looking for Ali McCoy, the Rangers striker who didn't find the net but was vitally involved in the opening two goals. So he should be with us in just a second. Ian Archer now has Ali McCoy. Ali seemed to go on forever. It did seem to go on forever. It was, uh, I think it was a tremendous advert for Scottish football today and it's a bit unfortunate there's got to be a loser. That's right, because penalties, the crowd love them, the players hate them. You couldn't watch, could you? Oh, I couldn't watch. It's diabolical. I mean, having said that, you've got to take one, so I was quite pleased I knocked one in. But it's very fresh as all on the penalty takers, you know. What about the match itself? Both sides could have won it at different times. Yeah, I had a couple of chances in the second period of extra time. I wish I'd stuck them away. But it wasn't to be. We're happy with the result, and I'm going up for my mate. So Rangers retain the trophy they won against Celtic a year ago. But well, what a tremendous match it was, and we mustn't forget the contribution of Aberdeen to this magnificent final. Very sad indeed, as Nicky Walker said, it had to be a loser. With Rangers fans enjoying the moment, the players too celebrating. And with that, I hand you back to Arthur Montford in the studio. Well, there we are with just a glimpse of Graham Sinners. An absolutely marvellous match. I'm trying to work out if we're going to get a quick look at that second half of that West Ham Manchester United game. Remember, it was 1 0 for United at half time. This is what off the air to say thank you to our two studio guests this afternoon, Mark McGee and Robert Russell. I would say, gentlemen, very, very briefly, one of the great cup finals of all time. Eh? Yeah, thoroughly entertaining. Yeah, Robert, yeah super. And a tough one to lose with penalties, wasn't it? Yeah, it's an unfair, to, unfair way to lose the cup yeah. final, but that's that. Right, absolutely marvellous. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed your afternoon with us. Back again with Scott Sport again next Sunday. Until then, with a look at the presentation of the Small Cups, goodbye for the present.